Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, March 18th, and today is the Monday recap where we just talk about what exactly happened uh, on Friday, what open trades we have for the week um, as it relates to TSLY, CONY, MSTY, as you know, for yield max. And then obviously, we can cover the defiance funds uh, to see where they stand going into the week. Um, and I can show you what I updated on my defined spreadsheet uh, in preparation for the weekly update, um, you know, next weekend. Also, BlackRock uh, is deciding to join the party and is doing some covered call ETFs. Uh, I could show you briefly what they're doing, which to me is just, you know, I guess they're competing with QILD and uh, JEPI, but we'll see. All right. Tesla. Real quick, um, they have two sets of strikes. They have the majority of their contracts, 30,325 contracts with a 170 strike. That's 3.93% out of the money. That expires Friday, March 22nd. And they have 11,635 strike uh, contracts with a 172.50 strike. That's 5.46% out of the money. So... Um, you know, Tesla has been on the downward. Tesla's price is 163.57. 30 day IV, which is higher than the usual, is 52%. Obviously, the chart, as mentioned, is on the downward. Tesla price, again, this is post reverse split. So it's 14.93. Potential capital gains for the week is only 65 cents. Again, this was from. Friday, the Tesla fund manager is getting his contracts right, so he's happy. Uh, obviously, he can't control the underlying, so is what it is. I'm not sure what their job performance uh, is based on, but I'm sure it's the weekly calls. Um, so, Curve, nothing new there. They just have the 80 contracts, 230 strike, which, you know, that's secure, but they're synthetic, man. That's synthetic. Cause they got to do something with it soon. Um, they still have a month, though, hopefully... Tesla will recover by then, but, you know, again, <clears throat> Tesla's, I don't know. Who knows what to expect? It could be another down week. It could begin to slowly recover. We could have really good news come out. We could have really bad news come out. We just don't know. That's the game. Let's check out pre-market. Um, so let's refresh market watch. Right now, it's about 4 a.m., so let's see, 4 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, okay, it's up 2.3% pre-market. Uh, it's at 167.34. So, again, it's pre-market, so it means nothing. Let me close that out. And let's go on to Kony. All right, Kony surprisingly has only one strike. All contracts, 15,320 of them, one strike, 257.50 is the strike. And that's only 6.25% out of the money. Crypto bull run, we are in the midst of it, right? We have the halving coming up, I believe, next month. So this is a risky play. They must see something that we don't, because uh, Misty, wait till you see Misty, it's even lower than that. Um, three, you know, I always say they're kind of connected because they're involved with a you know, they move with Bitcoin, so they're going to move together for the most part. Unless coin, Coinbase as a company has like separate news, which they rarely even do. Um, expiration date is 322, obviously, so Friday. Coin price currently 242.36. Again, their strike is 257.50. 30 day IV is 88%. Obviously, their chart looks pretty damn good. Coney price 2601. Again, outstanding. Remember, these launch around 20, so this is pretty damn good. Um, with, the, with the dividend that they pay to be at that price is, is pretty damn good. Um, potential capital gains at $1.62. Um, that was, you know, kind of me, like, what are you doing? Like, are you really, there's no need to do that with a 30-day IV of 88%. You could have gotten... You know a decent premium going a little further out of the money so i don't know that's a little too tight in my opinion but obviously they are the experts so we will see all right let's go to the pre-market um all right i'm gonna 
refreshed it. Okay, so coin is down in the pre-market. So again, they they see something. They see something. Um, coin is down 1.43%. So it's down to 238.89. All right, let's go to Misty. Misty, Misty, Misty. Misty is making everyone else look bad. All right. Look at this, 167 contracts, 1,850 strike, 3.79% out of the money. So as mentioned, we thought Coney's strike, you know, number one, they have one strike. Number two, they're way too close, way too close. Again, they, they must they must see something. Either that or they're just like losing their minds, but... Either way, Miss Mr. Price, MSTR Price, 1,782.36. Look at this 30-day IV, 159.73%. You do not have to sell a weekly call, only 3.79% out of the money with that kind of IV. Oof. But maybe if they figure, all right, we're at $40 for God's sake. Let's let's try to let's try to capture some more premium, but I don't know. Wrong wrong move, my opinion though. Um, potential capital gains, dollar fifty five. My reaction, you know, like what? What are you doing? What are you doing, man? What are you doing? Let's take a look at uh, pre market for micro strategy. Oh man, look at that! This is this is what I'm saying, man. This is why we pay them. Like we don't know what the hell's going on. Most in a lot of cases, like we question their moves and they turn out to be right because, again, they do more research than us. I'm not doing any research on this crap, you know. I'm just like, I'm just doing it based on what I see on the IV, what I normally assume and think is right. <clears throat> they look at the future, they look at possible little news pieces that could come out and things like that. So, MSTR is down in the pre-market 3.94%. Wow. It's down to 17.12.11, which is still up like a lot overall. All right. So let's talk about defiance. Um, did I not? Yeah, I did not uh, pull them up. Do I even have them? No. D E. All right. Again, uh, you know, as mentioned, uh, I did an interview uh, with Sylvia Jablonski last week, guys. So check it out if you haven't. Um, I'll pin it again to this to this video. But uh, it, it was it was a fun time. All right. So this is QQQI. Again, net assets. Uh, you know, I go into a little more detail of these because I don't cover them daily anymore. So. Bear with me. Uh, net assets, 293 million. Outstanding shares, 18.1 million. And uh, who, what are their holdings? Well, they have one position, 17,880 uh, strike price. Again, they sell puts daily. So selling puts is a bullish position. So they typically want the underlying, which is the NASDAQ in this case, to go to land essentially at at, at that price okay because they always they cash settle so uh so if you pull up the nasdaq they don't show pre-market nasdaq is at seventeen thousand eight oh eight their strike is seventeen thousand eight eighty so they they want you know they always sell the puts in the money which means further up in price so they want it to go up so hopefully we land at 17880 today. Last week was a rough week, but you know, maybe things will change. Let's close that. Let's look at the others. Who else we got? We got JEPY. How big is this fund? 138 million. 8 million shares. I feel like that number hasn't changed. Let's look at their holdings. Treasuries, cash, bond, uh, money market bond, 5125 All right, so they're selling a put that expires today, 5125 on the SPX. All right, 
currently priced at 5117 so that's very doable again we want the uh, indexes to go up so we can essentially cash settle for nothing or a penny that's the goal you know they need it they're in the negative and i'll show you guys how they've been doing but close that out last but not least let's talk about iwmy who has had the best month so far Sometimes they have the worst month. Sometimes they have the best month. Oh, how big are they? 134 million. I think, was that more than Jeppy? Did they pass Jeppy? Outstanding shares, 7.7 .7 million. And let's check a look at the holdings, treasuries, cash, money market bond. And here they are. 2,040 is their strike price. And they close. Oh, my God. <coughs> wow. Holy crap, they, uh, they're barely in the money. So they're taking it very lightly, right? They're, they're, not, they're not taking risk here, which, good. A lot of people were saying this. A lot of people were saying, why don't they go a little less in the money? And they are. Wow, okay. Because IWMY is doing good. Maybe they want to they wanna keep that. They keep that going. So Plus, don't forget the Russell, which is the underlying for IWMY, has a higher IV. So they're able to capture more premium since they have a higher IV, you know, taking less risk. Um, you know, the risk in lies with the underlying. But they don't have to sell put as far in the money with this one. So, but anyway, it's a pretty, uh, pretty good play there. Let me close that out. Close that out. Let me go to my spreadsheet and then we'll cover BlackRock. Just want to show you guys something. All right, so QQQY, just so you guys know, I added total return, if you look. So I go if we go back to day one, right? On the right in column G, you'll see now total return, okay? So obviously day one, they lost 29 cents, and then I'll have the percentage of total return based on the, the launch price, okay? And then obviously, you know, row 18, I'll add the, the dividend plus or minus the movement of the nav. So obviously the date they paid the dollar ten, um, you know, overall, <clears throat> you know, it, it went down thirty three cents. So not not thirty three cents. It went down what fifteen cents. But either way, total turn was in the negative in the beginning. And then you'll look over time it flipped, you know, sometime in November of last year and it, it went up 2%, 3%, 4%. But let's scroll to current date. We are in, what the hell are we in? March. I'm going too far in advance. All right, so right now for QQQY, as of March 15th, I am showing the total return, which, again, this compares the current price, adding in dividends, total dividends paid, um, a total return of 6.75%. So I know everyone says, oh my God, you know, NAV, it's going to zero, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you invested this from day one, your total return is 6.75%. So, uh, you know, that's not, that's pretty damn good. You know, they launched in what, September? So <clears throat> again, keep in mind, you get paid out a lot of it. So you're, you know, you're kind of forgetting about that, you know, you, but Instead, you're just taking it all out on the price, the price, you know, the price is going down, the price is going down. Don't forget, you're getting paid. Yeah, realistically, we want them to make exactly what they're paying. But, you know, this is not that easy. You know, it's not that easy. But uh, they're paying out. There's typically the same amount, you know, around, you know, which is what we talk about as the extrinsic income, regardless of, you know, how it turns out. So sometimes it turns out good. Sometimes it turns out bad. But overall, again, 6.75% total return. That's not bad. That's QQQY. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's look at JEPY. And we could, we could look at it from the beginning if you guys want. You know, because they, again, rough start for all of these, right? Down, negative, negative. So in the beginning, everyone said, oh, my God, these funds are horrible, horrible, horrible. Even if you look at total return, but then look at this 4% in December. Let's go down to March, current day. Where are we at? 
And look at this, J-E-P-Y, which again, it's my favorite of the three because it's, it's, it's high yield and to me it's less risky because it's the S&P 500. And look at this, 7.35% total return. Again, launch price is around 20 bucks. Their current price is like 17.33 for Jeppy. Plus they paid a lot of dividends. So if you take all that to consideration, total return, 7.35%, okay? I know, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, because the way I've been like presenting it, it only, it looks at it like in such a negative fashion, which I want you to see the whole picture, you know, which includes the historical dividend payments um, and how much you are actually making had you invested it from day one, because everyone likes to compare how much it's down from day one. So now I want to show you how much you're making from day one. Because you are making dividends. People tend to forget that when they just say that NAV sucks, you know. All right, let's look at IWMY. They actually started out in the positive. They were doing good. Then they flipped negative for a little bit. And then they, you know, up and down. And at one point, they were up 10% in December, total return. Um, and then when they went back down, this one fluctuates a lot. But people like that. People, people enjoy, you know, people with a high risk tolerance. They're like, bring it on, baby. Look at that. Even in even in March, beginning of March, it was up 10%. Even in March 13th, last week, it was up 10%. So we closed last week, IWMY, total return, 9.21%. Uh, that's really good. So yes, IWMY is the number one performer. And they came out the latest. So their total return is the highest, and they came out the latest. To give you, you know, to give you an idea of how these funds are performing based on the total dividend. So I'm, I'm very happy. I don't know why I didn't add this in the beginning, to be honest. But again, you, you learn as you go. But I'm very happy about this new, these new columns. Um, but it's just so you guys can see the whole picture. I added it to the other two as well. Tress is not looking that good. Um, they're in the negative. I don't know if you guys care about that. But uh, they're not doing well. From day one... You know, kind of going down, then they went up, and then where are we at? Current day is March, what, Friday was March 15th. So Tress, with the one dividend, overall they're down 9.45%. Maybe they'll get better, but that's not good performance. Spike T is also down, but they've been out about a week and a half or so, so they're down 0.3%, so, you know, is what it is. But I just wanted to share that with you guys as far as the fines goes. Um, but I think that's a better, you know, better full picture overall. Obviously, I'll cover the month of date income and then I'll cover how, how much they're making in total return. All right, let's get to BlackRock. So BlackRock, obviously, they own iShares and iShares is now getting into the party of covered call ETFs. Now, um, obviously, I, the re, not, number one, how are they so late to the game? Number two... You know, they don't need this, but of course they want a piece of the pie. They want a piece of everything. So here they are. What are they doing? Well, number one, their expense ratio is going to probably beat everyone's because they're so big, they can afford, you know, they're like Walmart, right? The Walmart of the uh, the funds, you know. They're, so their expense ratio on their first one, this is the S&P one, um, <clears throat> this, this ticker is IV. VW number one the ticker sucks so that's not fun to say um, but their expense ratio on the S and P covered call ETF is 0.25 percent so basically the strategy is to sell monthly covered calls okay you know their investment objective is um, what does it say track the investment results of the index blah 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 and then you know <clears throat> selling one month out covered calls. Key facts, what else? Look at this, already. I mean, this was launched March 14th. They have 14.8 million in net assets. How? Shares outstanding, 300,000. Uh, yeah, nothing new. Number of holdings, one, which is not really true. Because if we go to holdings, they hold um, IVV. Oh, of course, they hold their own freaking ETF. <laughs> which is, a, I guess, an S&P ETF, I didn't see that. And then um, they're selling calls on the SPX. And it's, I don't see it on the website, but their prospectus says they sell calls 
1% out of the money if the premium is there. If the premium's not there, they'll go as low as at the money. So, which is, you know, so this is kind of like a JEPI. So like I said in the beginning, this is comparison. They're trying to go for take out QYLD and JEPI. This one is the, uh, the, the Russell version. Their expense ratio is a little higher. So that's 0.39%. Um, and again, I don't think, does Global X have a, have a Russell? I don't even know. I'm sure they do, but either way, um, same, so same, same idea. They sell calls, monthly calls. They go out of the money. This one, they're going 2% out of the money because it's more volatile so they can capture more premium. Uh, and by the way, also. I may do a separate video, but also I read on the prospectus, at least for the S&P one, they don't want to pay out more than 2% of the NAV each month. This means you're typically going to cap out at a 24% annualized yield for these, which some would say it's low, but obviously that's pretty damn good. And it's also, it's protecting their NAV. But to be honest, if you sell monthly calls, you're not going to make as much premium as some of these others that sell weekly and daily. So... These are not <clears throat> in direct competition with Yieldmax or Defiance. These are in direct competition with Global X, who does the QYLDs, the oh the RYLDs, the Russell, I'm sure, um, and then the um, XYLD. So, and Jeppy, of course, Jeppy and uh, well, they don't have a, a Nasdaq, so I'm not going to say JepQ, but uh, but yeah, so so that's it. BlackRock is in the in the party. Um, to me, these funds are. I'm not buying these funds. Uh, and by the way, the other one, the Russell one is IWMW. But uh, I'm not buying them because they, you know, they sell monthly calls. I, I can do that. I can sell a monthly call. I have the time for that. You know, it's the ones that sell daily and weekly um, calls and puts and whatever that, you know, the, those are to me worth the expense ratio. Obviously, you know, I saw an article that says, oh, they offer the cheapest covered call ETF on expense ratio. Sure they do, but they don't do much work. They sell a monthly call, you know, and they're, you know, they're double dipping, right? They're owning their own holdings, of course, right? Here we go. Um, iShares, Russell ETF, there you go, you know, and, but whatever. Um, BlackRock, I think, is the biggest, them and Vanguard pretty much own everything of everything. So they want to own more. So here we are. So some people love them. Some people hate them for that reason. But, you know, if you want the lowest expense ratio and you don't want, you know, if, if you already invest in QYLD, XYLD and RYLD and you want a lower expense ratio, this is the way to go because it's pretty much, I believe, the same strategy. Um, so pick your poison. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like I said, it's cool. That it's on the index. It's cool that they're coming out with this. So hopefully they come out with more. To be honest, you know, the competition is better. However, um, you know, these these newer funds like Defiance and Yieldmax, they're they're considered small time compared to BlackRock, obviously. So, you know, they can't afford to charge these lower expense ratios, but they again they do more. They do daily, they do weekly. Um, I don't know what Global X charges, but obviously it's more than BlackRock. But either way, so that's the update. BlackRock is now joining the party via iShares. Anyway, that's the update. As always, guys, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. Hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you're entertained. It's Monday. We have a full damn week ahead. A whole week. At least I do. Um, and uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, hopefully we have a great week. Hopefully we earn a lot of money. But if you guys enjoy this content, as always, please hit the like button. Uh, it helps, you know, it helps hit, hit the algorithm. If you haven't seen my interview with Sylvia, uh, go check it out. I'll pin it to this um, if I remember. And um, yeah, I think that's all I got for today. So I hope you guys enjoy your week and I will talk to you tomorrow. Later.